Hello and welcome to the Radio Silly Video News. Sign up to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Radio Silly for updates on what's happening around the islands and video reports featuring the people and places you know. Our video report is brought to you in association with Truro and Penwith College. Read about courses and opportunities online and watch the building of the new Penwith campus at truro-penwith.ac.uk. Sign up to the Silly Lottery and you've a 1 in 2,000 chance of winning £1,000. You can play if you live on the mainland. It helps keep Radio Silly on air and funds good courses around the islands. Read more at sillylottery.com. The Silly Lottery. The Silly Lottery.com. There's been a development in the controversial issue surrounding an 18% pay hike for senior Alza Silly Council staff. Chairman of Council Julia Day has offered to give serious consideration to a full council meeting taking place without chief officers being allowed in the room to allow for full discussion about the pay rise. We understand that in the main meeting, when the controversial decision was discussed at the start of May, in part three, the section of the meeting from which members of the public and media are excluded, the chief officers remained. Mrs Day has been sent a petition from councillors concerned about the pay rise. Four members who opposed the pay increase and who serve on the Policy and Resources Committee, where the decision was narrowly passed, have written. Councillors Goddard, Martin, McCarthy and Pearson have put their names down. Councillor Mike Nellums, Gaz O'Neill, Molly Peacock and Merrin Smith have also signed the petition and the 12 signatories also include three former chairmen of the council Roy Duncan, Mike Hicks and Dudley Mumford. Julia Day is away from the islands at the moment and we think it's unlikely any meeting could take place if it does until the middle of next month. A keen member of St Mary's Golf Club has received funding for a course that will allow him to teach people who want to gain skills in the sport. Derek Metcalf went on an intensive seven-day course in Kent the autumn before last. Now, because of the qualification he's received, he's able to offer instruction to would-be golf club members in St Mary's. Derek says now he's got recognised skills to back up his teaching. It was a, a golf teaching course. It's organised by the European Golf Teachers Federation. Uh, it's a week-long course with uh, skill training, uh, golf rules, uh, lots of lots of hard, a whole round of golf you have to play, just to just to prove that you can, you have the skill to take the course. And why have you wanted to do this? Well, I've always had an interest in teaching. I taught my children to play golf, and over the years, I I think you you get an idea that maybe that is something you could do. Obviously, I'll never be to the standard of a PGA professional, but I just liked the idea of maybe able to help people, you know, uh, to learn to play golf, basically. But now you're at the, the status where you're not a professional because you're not paid for it, but you're kind of a similar qualification level, aren't you? It is. It is a professional qualification, but um, as as it is at the moment, I don't take money because I will then lose my amateur status. So I'm trying to. Everything I do at the moment is hopefully for the club, for the benefit of the club. Derek says the golf club intend to add tryout and taster sessions for visiting cruise ships in the future, one idea being that a bus could pick people up from the quay and take them to the club, feed them lunch, then let them try golf before they're dropped off back at the quay to return to their vessel. Well, hopefully we're trying to um, e encourage people off the, off the cruise ships at some stage to come in, but that's, you know, that, that, that'll be in the future. Maybe, maybe there's some teaching opportunities available from that as well. And are there enough people coming through from the islands with an interest in developing golf skills? Um, we've had about 50 people on our startup scheme, which has been which has been brilliant. It's hard work, but it's brilliant. Um, lots of lots of women coming forward, which is very nice. Uh, not so much the juniors. That's that's handled by people like Roger Williams and in the past by Smudge Smith. But uh, yeah. You know, 50 people over, over that year, it's, it's good. It keeps the, keeps the money ticking over as well. 23 pupils from the Five Island School aged 14 and 15 are on what they call 999 week. The youngsters are learning about the roles of the emergency services, including the ambulance service, fire brigade and coast guard, and have learned about police activity. Shirley Graham from St Mary's Police Station says it's not just a bit of fun, there'll be some valuable life skills learned. We've got 23 year nine students out of school for the week to do some life building citizenship <laughs> skills uh, with us for the week. 
Yeah. Don't. You, when you say um, life building, what, what sort of things are you going to be doing? Um, basically doing stuff they've never done before. We're going to, it's a bit like a student officer week, so it's it's quite uh, structured. They've got to do team building exercises, there's rules of the week. Um, and then we set them tasks, break them into groups and set them several tasks. And by the end of, of uh, school on Friday, there'll be a winning team. But it's all about team building and along the week they're going to have inputs from different uh, agencies. Um, we've got a drug and alcohol team coming across tomorrow, White Gold. There's a domestic violence team with a, a day's workshop. We've had lost person search management this morning from the ex-sergeant, Ashley. Um, we've got the fire coming in, the ambulance, the coast guards, a really packed week. The pupils had to undertake a search and rescue exercise and comb land around St Mary's to see if they could find a missing person as part of the police exercise overseen by former St Mary's police sergeant Ashley Putman who came back for the 999 week sessions. They also had to stick to a rigid timetable and deliver to that timetable or face on the spot exercises such as sit ups. Yeah, we've we've set a few uh, little penalties. Um, if you say a rude word or a swear word, it's five press ups. If you uh, take the Mickey out one of your teammates, it's five sit ups, which are proving hard for some of them, which they're not liking. Senior officials from the Government Office of the South West and the European Commission have met in Scilly to discuss progress in the £400 million economic development fund for the islands in Cornwall. The Convergence Programme team had their first ever meeting in Scilly. The Convergence Programme follows on from Objective One funding and is designed to raise our standard of living because at the moment both Scilly and Cornwall are below the average income levels for Europe. Cohen Delange has travelled from Brussels to see our islands for the first time and meet in Scilly with other members of the Convergence Programme. Uh, I am here because I am representing the European Commission in tomorrow's programme monitoring committee meeting of the Convergence Programme for Cornwall and the Isles of Scilly. So where have you travelled from to come here today? Oh, I travelled actually from Brussels this morning to Bristol and then on to the Isles of Scilly. Now the Convergence Programme obviously covers the islands, but I'm, I'm guessing it's quite different from some of the areas around the EU that, that you, you visit to look at the monitoring of uh, programmes. Uh, what's your first impression of Scilly? Uh, First of all, it's uh, a very nice place. Eh? At, uh, when you look at it, it's, it's really bright. Eh? Um, but it, of course, it has its particular problems being uh, let's say a set of uh, rather isolated islands uh, outside uh, the English coast. Uh, that has an impact on, on the economic uh, activity that one can develop here. Eh? And um, for people who aren't aware of, of European funding streams, why is the convergence... Funds, the, why is the project important to people in Cornwall and Scilly, would yeah. you say? Actually, the Convergence Programme, which is uh, part funded by the Regional Development Fund and part by the Social Fund, uh, is investing in businesses, is investing in skills, uh, is trying to stimulate economic activity, so to make sure that Cornwall and the Isles of Scilly can catch up with the rest of the UK and Europe. Eh? The party looked at the Porthmellon Industrial Estate and other projects that could receive financial support, including the Key, which should be redeveloped under the Root Partnership project. They also watched the landing craft bring heavy equipment ashore at the Rechabite Slip on St Mary's for the school build project. The vessel came ashore on Town Beach and then heavy equipment was moved up to the school site at Carn Gravel. Councillors have failed to reach a decision on an application which could see a section of a front garden removed on a property at the side of Church Road outside Hewtown. The applicant wants to create an off-road parking space and a garage for two vehicles at a property called Westwood Ledge. Members were split as to whether it was acceptable or not. Councillor Roy Duncan said there were mixed views. Councillor Julia Day felt that you could make the parking area and garage look acceptable. Gordon Billsborough mentioned he would like a car to be taken off the road, but despite his dislike of on-road parking, Councillor Fred Tysus felt some of the risks were too great. Members have deferred a decision and will discuss it in another meeting and take on board the views of the Cornwall Council Road Safety Officer to see whether a pull-off from the main road is acceptable and safe before they make a future decision.